I'm Rich Hunter, and I'm now a guidance and navigation engineer working at Rocket Lab. And three years ago, I, um, at the age of 26, told my parents that I was giving up a respectable job uh, to live two years without a salary in a faraway city to learn how to build spaceships. And my timing was particularly bad because my sister, who was a doctor, had just wisely invested in her first house. And my brother was preparing to represent New Zealand at the Olympics. So compared to that, my planned life as a penniless uh, space engineer who was wildly underqualified didn't quite meet the same standard. But to their eternal credit, they were very supportive, provided that I um, made my own way. And I was very fortunate to get awarded the um, Fulbright 2017 Science and Innovation Award. What has followed has been two years uh, that have been absolutely incredible, full of orbital mechanics, collegiate athletics, life advice from an astronaut, being kicked out of a NASA rocket factory in New Orleans, a Christmas Love Actually screening in New York with my adopted Fulbright family, good to see you guys, meeting the Pope's personal astronomer, and pretending to like country music for the sake of international relations. Very, <laughs> very important. So the program I chose was the Masters in Aerospace Engineering at uh, Georgia Tech in Atlanta. And my space systems design lab was specialized in astrodynamics and a holistic approach to space mission design. So we'd start from a fundamental science objective and the SSDL would teach us to design a trajectory, whether it's interplanetary or whether it's Earth orbit, and then build a spacecraft around that mission. So assembling propulsion systems and guidance and navigation and power and shielding to protect against wild thermal changes and um, galactic radiation. Finally, we were taught how to size and scope a rocket to fill it with enough propellant and do the correct staging to get that spacecraft into orbit. Now, this um, top-down design approach really suited the um, driving goal of my exchange, and that was built around one question. That was, how will the great science missions in space in the near future be developed? And what's the role that New Zealand could play in those missions? And that question really arose from it being a very exciting time in space. So there's been an explosion of really high energy commercial companies like SpaceX and Rocket Lab that have innovated and used to sort of fail quickly and learn approach to rapidly and quite substantially drop the cost of access to orbit. So now universities and small companies can um, participate in that sector. And this has really democratized space a lot. And the best part is that democratization is very inclusive. And this was really um, well mirrored in my SSDL cohort, which was made up of Americans and students from Panama, China, Colombia, UAE, Kazakhstan, Indonesia, and Taiwan. And all these people were very indicative of growing space programs in their own countries. And it also reflected that the industry as a whole was starting to be more open to new young players. So this was by far the most exciting takeaway from my exchange. And um, this broadening of talent and ideas has had a drastic impact very quickly. So for example, the Indian Space Agency just sent a probe to Mars orbit for $30 million less than it costs to make the movie The Martian, which is <laughs> pretty epic. So now all eyes at the moment are set on the moon and the Israeli Beresheet program and the Indian Shadrian programs both attempted landings over the past year, and NASA's Artemis program is currently in development to land the first woman on the moon by 2024, which is a goal that's epic and very long overdue. So collectively, these missions are going to pave the way for a permanent settlement on the lunar surface and eventually convert it into a fueling station for missions to Mars and to the outer solar system. And if that doesn't get you excited, I just don't know what will. So... Really exciting time to be alive. And each step along this path is going to require substantial technological growth. And that represents a really cool opportunity for New Zealand to sort of get involved. Just this week, Peter Beck announced that Rocket Lab is aiming to send its photon spacecraft to the moon as a pathfinder to test technologies and to um, develop satellites that will pave the way for the Artemis program. So looking back on the goals that I set out with at the very start, it's just the most awesome bookend I can imagine to come home, to be working with a team of engineers at Rocket Lab from all around the world, and soon maybe developing trajectories that'll take a New Zealand spacecraft to explore the moon. 
So I'm very fortunate that I graduated and went to the program at a very exciting time and space when it's really opening up. And I'm excited to see the future where New Zealand can build new partnerships and take on really challenging new ventures and create an environment that's very encouraging for young people to chase maths and science. Thank you.